Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So the deal here is the uh, number one is the Fonnie Willis, uh, Georgia uh, case for election interference. I'm reading my notes off to the side and it's supposed to start on July 8th. You know, she had to let her boyfriend uh, prosecutor go so her office could keep that case. So that's interesting. Well, a few questions around that. And then uh, number two is Alvin Bragg. That's the Manhattan uh, case uh, about hush money paying the porn star so he could wouldn't mess up with his campaign in, in 2016. So that it was scheduled <coughs> expected for March 25th, but Alan, Alvin Bragg is saying a month later, August 25th, would be okay. All the Trump people are trying to go longer. Then number three is the Eileen Cannon. That's the Florida Mar-a-Lago uh, classified documents case. And um, so she's had an interesting ruling, kind of not in Trump's favor recently. And uh, that one is maybe for July 8th. We'll ask about that. And then number four is Jack Smith. Now, this is the Tanya Chutkin uh, case. I think that's D.C., where it's a conspiracy uh, to uh, overturn the election and obstruct uh, justice. And uh, the original date for that was March 4th, which has come and gone because they're waiting for the Supreme Court to decide on this uh, presidential immunity thing. And so those are the kind of the, the questions we'll uh, frame broadly and get through quickly. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So we're going to jump into this and uh, see what we get for these four cases. If you see me looking off to the side, it's because I'm reading my notes uh, about uh, who's involved and what dates were uh, kind of proposed and uh, some generalized stuff like that. These cards are interesting. And, you know, I'll tell you more about the cards at the end of the video if you want to find out about them. And I don't get paid for these uh, little um, explanations I do about the cards at the end of my videos. It's just that when I was just a viewer of videos, I wanted to know more about the cards that the readers were using. And so I decided when I was going to record videos that I would uh, somehow talk about the cards I'm using because I got a bunch. If you look behind me, you can see I probably got 60 sets of cards that go all the way down to the floor on both sides um, that I use. Someone complained recently that I used too many different cards, but that's what I like. So the deal here is that these cards have got interpretations on both sides and they're called the vice versa tarot. It's kind of before and after. So like if you look at this card, you see this person is coming up to this person. You can see them from the, the rear and this is uh, temperance. And uh, over here, you can see that, or maybe this is a star card actually, I apologize, yeah. And then here you can see after. So you have to, you don't, you know what the card is going to be uh, before you turn it over because you've got one version on it, of it on one side. But I'm going to not uh, interpret the side that's up, I'll interpret the side that uh, to be revealed. So we'll see how all this goes. And I haven't used these cards in a while, but I really like them. They're a little hard to use, but you know, before I do any of this, let's have just a moment of, you know, meditation. Let's see how this is going to come out uh, for these uh, questions here. So the first one we're going to talk about is that Georgia, Georgia, Fonnie Willis case where he had the perfect phone call asking him to find 11,000 some odd votes, uh, which is what, and wanted one more vote than, than he needed, uh, one more vote to overcome the, to get the, the to, to win that state. And uh, so that's Fonnie Willis, and now it's all been in the news that, oh my God, she's having an affair with the lead prosecutor that she hired and was paying big money. And, and some people said, oh, I guess she uh, hired him just so they could drag this case out so they could take um, cheesy uh, vacations. Uh, it just is ridiculous. But anyway, so they ruled uh, recently that, yeah, she could keep the case, but she has, if she wants to keep the case, she has to let that, her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, I guess it is now, uh, off the case 
And uh, so we'll uh, ask a few questions about that. Then uh, we'll go on to Alvin Bragg. That's the Manhattan Hush Money, which was going to start on March 25th, and now maybe April 25th, or maybe after. Then Eileen Cannon, which is the Florida Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, where he hid all the documents, moved them around, played uh, whack-a-mole with them. And I'm telling you, somebody needs, because now they've determined that he did move some boxes to um, that um, uh, uh, New Jersey uh, club, and... Um, and, uh, and that's where his uh, ex-wife, uh, Ivana, is buried. And I'm telling you, somebody needs to look in the coffin. If you don't remember, Ivana was cremated. So she would have been in an urn, a bunch of ashes. And they had a huge coffin and a, dug a hole in the backyard, basically, and put her in. Well, I want to know what's really in that huge coffin because it's just ashes. So um, I think there's some documents in there. And uh, you look, one day there's going to be some sort of a renovation to make that a, an elaborate um, a monument, I think, uh, for Ivana. But I think the underlying cause will be a, a reason to get into that coffin and get out whatever's in there. Because that's like money in the bank for Trump that he can't touch right now. And then um, the last one uh, is uh, the Jack Smith case with Tanya Chutkin. I think that's D.C. And that's about conspiracy which caused the insurrection and um, so the conspiracy, cons conspiring with other folks to um, halt the um, announcement of Joe Biden as the winner and obstruct ju justice and, uh, and calling his minions to the Capitol to hang Mike Pence and kill Nancy Pelosi and, and so it's just all insane with a whole slate of fake electors, remember that? All those guys should be prosecuted, maybe they are being. I'm not keeping up on that as well as I should be, probably you too. And uh, that was originally going to start on March 4th, which is coming on. And now we're waiting for the Supreme Court to rule on whether he had <clears throat> any kind of presidential immunity, which, of course, he didn't. So we'll see how jacked up the Supreme Court is in the long run. First, Fonnie Willis, Fonnie Willis, Fonnie Willis. July 8th is, well, yeah, July 8th. Is that case going to go to uh, July 8th or beyond? four cards and remember uh, you're seeing what these cards are here but I'm going to interpret them on the flip side that you don't see. So the first card to kind of get into, into the spirit of what's going to happen on that Fonnie Willis Georgia election interference, perfect phone call, give me 11,000 votes, uh, a bunch of uh, fake uh, electors in Georgia. Well we got here the three of cups. <clears throat> cups are emotion, compassion, heartfelt situations. The three of cups are, are celebrations. And if you look in this card here, you can see like almost doves flying away from this cup and these women uh, celebrating. I would say this is good for uh, Fonnie Willis, but let's see what these other three cards tell us. So the election interference case, will that take place um, on or before uh, July 8th? Okay, so this is celebratory. That, oh, so that's the only card I drew, I would say yes. Uh, the next up here, ah, is the Two of Swords, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, and Making a Choice. Which way are we going to go? Um, in this card, this uh, vice versa, kind of before and after, it's interesting that if you look at the, this one, you can see that they're coming up to a decision, and this side you can see that the decision has been made. So I'm going to say that they're coming up to the decision... This is March, April, May, June, July. And this one is saying, making a, a legal decision as to which way to go. The next card is going to be that star card, uh, getting some balance in there or some temperance emotionally. And the last card on whether it will take place on or before that July 8th uh, proposed date is, ah, so this is, all this is Fonnie Willis. All these women and then this fighter. The knight is a fighter for the royal court. This is pentacles. And this is a great big show of value here for this horse and it has stopped dead in its tracks what does that mean i think it's not going to go any further than july 8th so that could very well be the date that that's going to happen so Fonnie willis the election interference case in uh, georgia we called the 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 guy and said give me some more votes we have celebrations we have making a choice, but that decision has yet to be made. This person has their back to us and is trying to decide which way to go. But this person is facing us full front on with balancing that emotional um, situation. 
and then but Fonnie Willis is, is steadfast in her tracks not moving and being a fighter for her value she wants this to go on as soon as possible I think there's a good chance just because the cards have kind of indicated her strength to us that it will be that July 8th um, date write it down because I'll forget what I've said now I'll go back and look at these videos later at all I can't tell you what I've been right or wrong maybe one of you wants to do that but um, now the next one is going to be Alvin Bragg so that's the hush money so remember he had sex with Stormy Daniels and um, and uh, paid her in the end I think $125,000 $120,000 I don't know through his attorney Michael Cohen who ended up paying the money out of his own pocket Trump ended up reimbursing him and hiding the reimbursement as an, as an attorney's expense and Alvin Bragg in Manhattan says, well, you know, that was a lie. So you've lied on your, on your, on um, what you said that was, and um, that doesn't work for us. So New York is not going to be defrauded that way, Alvin Bragg says. But um, will it go on March 25th, or will it be a month later, which Alvin Bragg is saying, he'd be okay for doing it a month later. Another four cards for Alvin Bragg. One, two, three. These cards are so interesting to use. I used to be really intimidated by them because, you know, front and back, same card, you can kind of see what it's going to be. Um, but uh, the more I've used them over the few years I've been doing this, I think three years, the more I've enjoyed using them. So, Alvin Bragg, Hush Money, March 25th or April 25th. The first card right here is the Moon card and its secrets being revealed. If you look at the other side, just to give us an idea of the orientation here, you can see this is past that. And so the, 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 the secrets had been revealed, but right here the secrets are going to be revealed. So, Alvin Bragg, Alvin Bragg, going to be revealed. So that makes me think, push to the future a little bit. The next one here is going to be this Ace of Pentacles. And in either case, you can see this right here, the ace, the value is getting ready to come down into the hand of this person. That could indicate the March 25th, but I have to think it maybe it's going to be the April 25th. That's my myself kind of deciding that. The next card for Alvin uh, Bragg on the Hush Money case is this Knight of Swords. Alvin Bragg, uh, just like Fonnie Willis, is the knight. He's fighting for the truth, justice, the rules, and the law. And the last card, will it be March or April? is this seven of swords which is um you can see here the typical way you see the seven of swords we've got some issues coming up uh, swords uh not swords but wands and wands are actions plans forward movement you can see this person is ready to battle that but you can see here he's waited he's gone from daylight till nighttime so this is april 25th all those issues are still there, but Alvin Bragg is ready to fight. So April 25th, write that down. Okay, Alvin Bragg. Now the next one is going to be Eileen Cannon. Oh my gosh. So this is the Trump judge um, in Fort Pierce, I think it is, Florida. And this is about the documents that he stole from the White House and shuffled around and hid from his attorneys and lied about where he had and got his uh, henchmen, his stooges, to try to... Play, um, you know, where is where are the documents? Like that that uh, game cup game, we have a ball under the cup, and you're switching it around, and um, and so this is that. So Eileen Cannon's case is that going to be July 8th? Which um, so, oh, that's similar to the Funny Willis. I wonder if I got date wrong to Funny Willis, but July 8th on the Eileen Cannon case, classified documents. Is that going to? go for it and she recently had to rule against Trump which she has not been doing so four cards for Eileen Cannon is this one going to uh, go on or is it going to continue to be pushed off completely first card up is the five of swords which is a pointless arguing swords actions plans forward movement the volcano is about to erupt and this pointless arguing has nothing is not going to have any effect on that going off. So no matter when that case comes off, it's not it's going to be a disaster for somebody and who would it be? It'd be Trump. So the um, classified documents case, the Ace of Cups, this is emotional. Okay, this is a great big and we see this person um, uh, walking 
away, we have our backside here. So if we're looking at the back of the judge, Eileen Cannon, could this be further on beyond July 8th? The next one, again, that star card. I love it when these, when these uh, or temperance, I forget which one it is, but either one is a similar meaning because this is telling us there's some emotional balancing that has to go on here. And uh, this uh, judge is in the spotlight, Eileen Cannon. And then the final card here is this Five of Swords, which is an abuse of power. And what does this side look like? Okay, so this abuse of power shows everyone walking away and the abuser standing here with the swords. Everyone walking away and the abuser standing here with the swords. So uh, another five card here. So this is the uh, argy bargy, the pointless arguing because it eventually will be a problem. The back of um, the judge right here on this great big emotional issue, the emotional balancing and her as a star trying to balance all of that out and the five of swords, truth, justice, rules and law and this is an abuse of power. I think it's going to be delayed beyond uh, the most recent date as of today. And I think that was July 8th. I could be wrong on that date. I should have done some research. I didn't. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is Jack Smith. His cases are the ones that are most interesting to me personally. But Jack Smith and the judges Tanya Chutkin, I think this is DC, where this is going to happen. And this is a conspiracy to defraud and the obstruction of of justice um, and the original date for this was March 4th but the Supreme Supreme Court has uh, taken up taken that up and we're waiting to see what that decision is going to be like uh, and that they're going to decide about this presidential immunity situation so Jack Smith is this one going to the original date was March 4th so let's do four cards on this Jack Smith's Tanya Chutkin Conspiracy and Obstruction in DC. What's going to happen with this? First card, okay, is this uh, 19. Oh, what is the 19? So I can tell from here. The Sun card. Oh, well, it's interesting because the Sun has gone down on the side of this card that's showing up for us. There's an obelisk and there's a cold winter ahead. So I think this is going to be put off. Uh, this is the waiting for the Supreme Court. The next one is going to be here. This two of one short term plans. So it may not be that far off. The next card up is the um, this is the knight or the page. This is the page. This is the page of um, what was the knight looking like? This is the page of uh, wands, which are actually plans forward movement and. Here it's in the light, but here it's off in the dark. So this small amount of, of pushing this off, this plan, pushing it off into the future. So waiting for the Supreme Court. And then the final one, ah, this three, so these are long-term plans. So yeah, this is gonna be pushed off uh, a bit more. So it's gonna be longer than we would have wanted. So this Supreme Court ruling is going to give us some sort of a delay. Is the delay going to but it doesn't say it's going to stop it says it's a delay so that tells me okay i don't need to draw more so that tells me that they're not going to rule in his favor they're going to say that he does not have any presidential immunity but the decision coming to that decision is going to uh, take a while so that's what i've got today on this quick um, video on trump and most of the criminal and um, uh, problems that he has Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versa Tarot. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So Massimiliano, Filadoro, Lunea, Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook, easy to read, um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with 
But what I really love about these cars, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's a this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card. And then there's a that side, which is in, indicated by a little embellishment, embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the... And there's no right and there's no wrong. There's no good and there's no bad. It's just that um, a different um, view on how to divine this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them you know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are. Because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out because there's a this and a that side and uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. And uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them.